are back with Outtakes with Andy Oak, who's the author of Unusual for Their Times, On the Road with America's First Ladies, Volume 1. And we're going to go through the rest of our trivia questions. Yeah, this will be fun. So go ahead and spin the wheel. All right, great. See what we get. It would be a shame to leave them in the envelope. Yeah. unanswered. Oh, outside, outside interest. Outside interest. <laughs> okay. Pink, I love pink. All right. So the question... This one didn't work very well, I'm afraid. Well, good thing it's an outtakes and it I didn't know. happen during the live. I know. That would be I'm glad you didn't pick this one. Okay, outside <laughs> of which first lady was also known as the first lady of baseball? Ah, yes. There are many first ladies that have enjoyed sports and yeah. been quite sporting themselves, but the first lady of baseball was Grace Coolidge. Yay! It was her absolute Yay. favorite sport. Yay. Yes, yes. <laughs> she, was the, uh, she was the scorekeeper at University of Vermont. And then um, uh, uh, for the men's baseball team, uh -huh. and then uh, you know you can see pictures of, of her and Cal at various uh, opening days and World mm -hmm. Series, throwing out you know the pitch and everything. And Grace just has a smile, you know, just all across her face. And there's Cal, just kind of stone yeah. faced and whatever. Do you know if she played sports at all as a younger woman, or if she I, was know, just a fan? You know, I think she was just a fan. Yeah. Uh, Rosalind Carter right. uh, was was on the basketball team. Mm -hmm. Um, as were, were many other first ladies, played a lot of a lot of basketball and 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 and, and team sports like mm -hmm. that. But uh, Grace Coolidge, to my knowledge, was just uh, was was just a spectator, but just absolutely loved it. The the American Baseball League would give her these Art Deco because of the time period in which Grace lived. Uh, these these fantastic clutch purses and in the Empire style and and in the purses there would be these little charms that gave her free entrance into any ballpark. Uh, to see all the games for American League games and stuff. Oh, and they gave her a certificate that called her the First Lady of Baseball. That's a great benefit of being First Lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was fantastic. And she, she took every advantage of it. All right. Let's spin the wheel again. Let's see. Let's Educational attainment. Okay. And the question is, that one much better. Yeah, very good. Which first lady was a graduate of Stanford University and spoke seven, seven languages? Yes, one of my favorites, Lou yeah. Hoover. Yeah. Lou Hoover, would, uh, Lou and, and Herbert Hoover met in geology class at Stanford. She's the first woman to graduate, definitely from Stanford and most likely in the United States, with a geology degree. Um, she went out in the field with her husband. They were millionaires before, by their 30s. Had two sons, and they traveled all around uh, around the globe, uh, around the world. And uh, the, the first administration of now three to not take a salary, a um, uh, presidential salary, because they had that money. Uh, the, what the Hoovers did for America and Americans, uh, even more specifically, even before he was in the White House, is just astronomical. And the fact that they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time for the Great Depression, nothing that the Hoover administration would have caused or, or even could have realistically solved in four years. But if you look at what the Hoovers did outside of that, even before he was president, they were just, they were probably the two most qualified, educated, intelligent, and world experienced people to ever be in the White House up, up through today. They're just remarkable, remarkable people. And so, would you say that, or, uh, that First ladies are in general kind of better educated than the average American for their time period, or more yes. interested in education. Yes, for their there, time there is something. Why I the title unusual yeah. for their time? I I got that because at the locations I went to, the curators and directors and presidents of these places were saying, oh well, you know, Francis Cleveland was unusual for a time because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Mary Lincoln unusual for a time, yeah. and I did find that you know. Education had a lot to do with it. And not only were they higher educated or better educated than women of their time, men of their time. I, I mean, these are, these, are, these are highly unique individuals uh, uh, that, that get into the position to marry men that would become president. And what they do uh, in many times, I mean, right from the beginning, George Washington married up when he married Martha Dandridge Custis. And a lot of these men married up. And it's because these these unusual women, these, these women of higher intellect and higher uh, 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 drive and inspiration, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they sought out these men that could take them places until they could take themselves places on their own, just for the nature of, of, of how women's rights and, and their voices and stuff have developed. But women have been involved 
right from the very beginning, instrumentally and, and just way more significantly than people know or they get credit for. Right. Well, let's do another question. We know what the next two are going to be. We've got a choice. Political, Political partnership, partnership. Which we've just alluded to a little bit. I think this is a hard one. Yeah? Let's see. All right, stump All right. the first lady's hand. Which first lady reviewed her husband's speeches, suggested talking points, performed opposition research, and generally served as the president's private secretary? I, I would. That funny enough, that right. that describes more than one. Right, yeah. But I'm going to go with Lady Bird Johnson. Mm -mm. No, Sarah, Sarah Polk. Polk. That, well, that is true. Right. That is true. Right. That is true. Uh, 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 Sarah Polk. I guess it's more. Well, they, they, they both yeah. did. Sarah Polk did it at a time, yeah. given the early 1800s that, that, she, that he was president. They're the only presidential couple, well, George Washington and Martha Washington didn't have children, but she was raising her grandchildren, so right. children were involved. Yeah. But the Polks had no children of their own. Sarah Polk moved from Tennessee to Washington, D.C. when Polk was uh, Speaker of the House. Mm -hmm. And she was very, very influential in getting him to the next campaign stop, knowing she read these articles, she sat in on, on house discussions, and she's the reason why Polk himself did not drink and they did not serve hard alcohol in the White House when he was president, because she would be the hostess at these gatherings on the hill when he was Speaker of the House, and men would come over and play cards and drink the whiskey and start getting you know loose lips and sinking ships and get the liquor in them, and she said after a party, she's like, okay, no more of this for us. We can let them drink all they want, right. and they can tell us every secret and everything that they, right. that, they, that they shouldn't be telling us, but we'll be the ones with a clear mind and a clear head to do this. So, uh, and, and uh, she far outlived Polk and was another um, uh, sort of one of these advisors or consultants similar to a Dolly Madison, mm -hmm. only outside of Washington. She left Washington, so she didn't continue that influence as long as Dolly Madison did in Washington, D.C. But for, for, for a political spouse, for a first lady to have elevated her husband and helped significantly in his career, Sarah Polk is, is one of the big ones. She's a 19th century, and it seems to me in the 20th century you have people, uh, women like Mrs. Wilson oh. and Eleanor Roosevelt, yeah. Yeah. Who, are, who are beginning to really take this to uh, even a more public Absolutely, level. absolutely. As the role evolves mm -hmm. and women start taking it, but if you think about it, uh, Abigail Adams yeah. would be a progressive thinker today mm -hmm. for women's rights, civil rights, uh, gender relations issues and things like that. I mean, there's a famous uh, uh, letter, in, and it's taken out of context often, where she says, um, you know, remember the ladies. And, and, and everyone says, oh my gosh, you don't remember the ladies. Well, I mean, think about it. I mean, that's, that's hundreds of years before women even get to vote. And she's saying, remember the ladies. But if you read the whole letter, it says mm -hmm. something to the effect of, without the women's favor, you do not have the men's on your side kind of thing. And I always liken it to this in modern times, who holds the remote control in your house right. versus who picks the show? Mm -hmm. Men hold the remote. Uh, there's right. obviously, you know, yeah. exception for every rule. But guys think they're sitting there on the couch holding the remote, but their wives, girlfriends, significant others saying, I'd rather watch this. I mean, it's the same kind of thing where if, if I came home in the, in the 1800s and, and my wife said, you know, who are you voting for? I said, John Adams. And my wife said, well, no, you're not. That guy's a jerk because of X, Y, and Z. You know, I, I'm going to think maybe life will be better for me if I don't vote for the man that upsets my wife. I, I might have things better at home. So if she says, oh, well, I, I like, you know, Jefferson better or whoever better, I'm voting for that as opposed to a man that has women in mind and women, you know, to, although there weren't women's rights and things like that, women's issues and concerns of women, and got them on his side, he would be elected president, and it, and it rang true. So the, the idea is, is that even throughout society in general is that even though women can't vote, it doesn't mean that they're not political or they don't absolutely. have some political Absolutely. Influences. From the beginning. Right. From the absolute beginning. Yeah. All right. I guess. Last one. It doesn't spin. Right. Oh, it does spin. It does spin. It even spins. It's, it's, it's kind of there. Right. The accessible presidency. Yeah. Oh. No, this, I, I, this is interesting. The category alone. All right. Uh, who won an Emmy Award? Oh, oh, an Emmy Award yeah. would be Jacqueline Kennedy, yeah. the only the only first lady uh -huh. to win an Emmy Award for her 1963, I yeah. think, 
uh, uh, televised broadcast, six, 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 seven, 62, 62. Yeah, I know it was right around Valentine's Day. It was February of 1962. Yeah. The amazing thing about that is when you go to, it was, it was aired in black and white. Yeah. We've all seen, well, maybe we all haven't seen, a lot of us have seen mm -hmm. Jackie, the movie, yeah. uh, uh, and you see it in color, and, and you don't see the original broadcast in color. When you see the original dress in Boston at the Kennedy Library, it's red, and everyone is always surprised. Well, that's Mrs. Kennedy's fashion sense. It was February, Valentine's Day. Of course she wore a red dress, beautiful as always. But um, first ladies, almost first and foremost, speaking across the board, are their president's PR manager. They are the ones that make this man uh, uh, more palatable, more familial, more, more, more friendly, especially the gruff ones. Dolly Madison did it for, for James Madison. Um, Grace Coolidge certainly did it for Calvin Coolidge. Melania Trump is currently doing it for Donald Trump. Very polarizing uh, uh, man who, who people, you know, you either love him or hate him, it seems. And Melania Trump will do that for her. Uh, George W. Bush, uh, uh, Laura Bush was a fantastic advocate uh, for, for his administration, uh, and Jacqueline Kennedy, of course. But what these women do by going out and making their presidential husbands more acceptable, more friendly. First ladies always poll higher in, in, in opinion and approvability uh, uh, with, the, with the public. And, and it's, it's, they really are out there always campaigning for their husbands. Well, and the, even though the role of first lady is not something that's elected, it's something that I guess is, is a choice in some respects, not always a choice. Yeah. It's an incredibly important role for all of these different women who have supported the presidency and then extension supported the country over the past um, couple hundred years that we've um, had this particular role. And I want to make sure that we all go back and look one more time at the book. So uh, if you go to firstladiesman.com, yep, right? firstladiesman.com, you're going to find me. a lot of uh, just kind of more fun information, more information about the book that's coming out next, and then if you have a speaking engagement where people can come see you, or speaking if you're going tour is on there to be on television, or all on the Facebook television appearances. It's, like it's, it's, a, it's a fun website. Right. I mean, I, no, it, it's a, it's a good. Is. People seem to enjoy it. You know, make sure that you all navigate to womenshistory.org so you can see additional interviews that that we've done with Andy, and then also find out some more. Um, of fun first lady quiz and trivia there as well. Thanks so Thank much for so having much me. Now it's been an absolute blast. Love to right. come back. Okay.